Hey, it's The Weekend again, Jordan Trask here, and I wanted to change up my video strategy a little bit and talk about something that's a little bit different today, something that I'm actually working on and not something that's a random idea, strategy, ideation, or guide, or tip, or uh, criticism, I guess, is kind of what I normally post about. Um, and talk about what my wife's been doing and, and what we've been doing since moving to Mississippi. I don't, I don't know if you know, if you're new to following me, but I lived in Arizona the last 10, 15 years. Been running my business about five, six years. I had a couple partnerships there in place, web development, just a bunch of different things going on that really worked really well. And we uprooted and moved down here to the south, southeast of Memphis. And everything's new, right? The culture is new, the people are new, the clientele base is new, opportunities are new, what people like are new. Um, and then the simple fact that with my wife, for her photography business, um, she wasn't busy in, in, in August and September for the first time in a long time. And it's hot here, um, but winter rolls in. So that's something that we didn't really expect. Uh, even me, some of, the, some of the contracts that I had, uh, one company actually got bought out. So there's just so many things that changed. And it's a good thing, right? Um, like I was talking about a couple weeks ago, being preventative and vulnerable about this type of stuff helps other people. And you know, I always had contingency plans and stuff, but I'd never really thought that I'd have to roll into them, right? So one of the things that uh, really caught us off guard when we first moved here was just uh, the concept of laying that foundation again. I get all these text messages when I start doing a video. But relaying that foundation, building relationships, talking to people, pursuing them, getting them, getting to know them. I mean, even just finding a church for us and then getting to know our neighbors and stuff, it takes a lot of time and effort. Um, you gotta pursue people and invest that time the same as with your customers. You can't just spew at them and then give them a deal and then expect them to hang around for the rest of their life, right? So um, you gotta be mindful of these things and, and this experience has really reminded me about something that I'm already fluent in. And it's funny how God works that way. Um, but one of the ways, I'm rambling again, one of the ways that I wanted to generate her business, I wanted to share with you guys, because it may be something that you could do in a different type of way, is I started reaching out to different caterers and um, pizza places and uh, some really specific industries, I won't go down the whole list, and trying to put together a partnership to give away a senior photo session with my wife. She's it's one of, the easiest shoots for her to do typically give a high, a high school or college grad direction. They listen really well. It's not like kids, it's not like a wedding or anything like that. And at the end of the year when we moved here, that was something that we could gear up towards. And as you saw on my feed and my wife's feed uh, over the past month or so, uh, we ended up uh, landing a partnership with one of the more prominent pizza chains, local pizza chains here in Olive Branch. And I thought that was really cool. When, I think they got like four or 5,000 uh followers or whatever i guess you call them these days on on facebook alone which is a lot for a smaller town um pizza place it's just literally it's just delivery they're not even that big so i thought that was really cool and basically what i wanted to do um i wanted to share this because it just my point is marketing isn't just about you know it's not just pigeonholing yourself into you have to do seo good you have to do, have a content strategy you have to blog certain amount of times every day you have to spend x amount of money on ads on on social media ads on search ads uh, billboard ads and you, you have to buy shirts you have to give away stuff you know you ha have to uh, have these cute social media posts and stuff that you just ha have to do every day and, and a lot of times this stuff is wasteful if you, if you let it just become a, a task instead of a strategy if that makes sense and that's really what i do here at prefocus is I don't, I don't just write your blogs for you. I don't just help you come up with social media posts that are cute, that'll get you attention. You know, we, we wanna come up with some stuff that'll drive new acquisition, that'll help you uh, build awareness and recognition, um, not in a salesy way, but in a qualitative way. So, um, you know, over the last, you know, what, six months now, I've been quantitatively uh, spinning my wheels, trying to come up with anything that can help uh, my wife get her, you know, traction a little bit here in a new market. And so that was really exciting um, and it took time. I wanted to share this because it took time. You know, I don't know how many emails I sent trying to explain it. People that mis uh, misunderstood it and thought I was trying to sell them something. Um, and at the end of the day, it, it was me trying to drive them business. So with, with the OB pizza, uh, I think they had to spend $30. So you go in, you spend $30, you show your school ID, your senior, 
uh, you get something, share, share the ticket or token on social media, and we enter you into the contest, then we announce the winner. And I mean, that's no work, zero work by the pizza place. It's 100% exposure by them. We're giving them a product that's three, four hundred dollars to give away. That'd be like giving away a TV or an Xbox or something. I think maybe that's something that I should have explained better that businesses don't understand. Um, and I designed, I designed the ad myself, and uh, you know, used our imagery, used their imagery. Um, and so it was all hands off for them, com completely beneficial for them. I wasn't selling them anything. I was 100% looking for a quality business that we could align with that already had a following that could give my wife a little bit of exposure. Um, and the cool thing is I wanted to share this because it didn't get, it didn't get a lot of traction. Uh, you know, probably, I don't know if it's going to end up being worth it in the long run. Um, but it did get me in front of a business owner, which that's who I help. So I'm able to give him some tips and, uh, you know, even if he doesn't hire me, he might know somebody that could refer somebody to me down the road and at the end of the day this is what it keeps coming back to it's not about the sale it's not about me worrying about that it's about me being consistent with my value <clears throat> constantly looking for ways to um i don't like to say get in front of people but yeah yeah build awareness or get in front of people uh strategically um it, it doesn't have to be pigeonholed um, so what this did, it ended up uh, every, everything Bunt Cakes, I think is what they're called. I'm pretty sure they're a national brand. I'd never heard of them um, until I moved here. They stopped by my office and brought some stuff and, you know, just wanted to say, hey, if you're having any office parties or you're doing anything for your clients, you know, we'd love to help you. I was like, that's cool. You do something for me. And they actually saw uh, the promotion that we ran with the pizza place. So now they're interested in it. And since senior photo season is pretty much over now i think school is over in a week or so um now we got something in the works for weddings because they do they do cakes uh, small wedding cakes and then birthday parties uh and even graduation parties or whatever and um we're, we're going to try to position it in a different way than we did the ob pizza but my point is they saw the benefit they saw the value in the pizza place doing that they saw that um the person managing it the add to the experience to the quality of uh, you know the giveaway uh was good was was sound and it wasn't cheesy it wasn't fake it wasn't difficult it wasn't confusing and now they're interested in doing it and so you take one thing i could have done is i could have wrote 20 blogs for right i could have spent ten thousand dollars in ads and it would have been fruitful right I, it, it probably would have been i've done it before but we did something for free. We did something that took some time. We built some relationships. Not only did I meet tons of people, but now it introduces somebody else that can continue that same strategy that now I have, uh, I want to say the experience, but, but a template down to do it. Um, and who knows what doors that'll open. And um, I wanted to share that today just because, you know, when it comes to your marketing, you may think that you have to spend X. You may think that you have to do Y. You may think that you have to pay somebody X or Y to do Z. But it's it's not it doesn't have to be that complicated, guys. Being able to sit down with somebody that knows what they're talking about, and for the most part, you as the business owner or or CMO uh, or stakeholder, I would at least like to think uh, you know what you're talking about. You're the expert, so working with somebody that's able to take um, your your uh, knowledge and your understanding of the market, and then align it with. Uh, what he knows is extremely powerful um, and that he would be me so I'm not I don't like to be the person that does the asking but a lot of times you guys can come up with this stuff on your uh, on your own sit down with your employees buy them lunch uh, have a little roundtable discussion hey guys I really need to be getting more creative with our social media content our comp competition is stepping their game up uh, sales are dipping I think that we're not uh, up to date with some things and and what what can i get your feedback and not only will that strengthen your culture but i guarantee you it gets you some really good ideas um some of the things i've done in the past like i had a, a music artist once that he he was trying to get his album out there so i think i've done this before we we did uh made some t-shirts right so we made some t-shirts with some lyrics to the album uh and uh, we went out to scottsdale uh, the Scottsdale Plaza, I think is what it was at the fashion square and just asked as many people as we can. Hey, what's your favorite shirt? And what we ended up doing is we got, you know, everybody's favorite shirt was by far one 
the one that, that they liked. And then the second one, we ended up uh, just notating that. We went into a couple stores down there in the boutiques. We said, hey, the, I, we found 200 people that really like the shirt. I'm gonna print it out. They're gonna order it and it's for my album and I'd like to partner with you. Um, and this is the type of stuff that I believe in. Uh, this is uh, what I'm tr my goal is. This is what my music stands for. It's not anything that you have to be worried about. And we would like to put the shirt in the store and these people can pick the shirt up from your store and come and order it from the store. And you see basically what we did here is instead of working out a deal to sell something in the store first, we got the demand first, we got orders first, then we went to those stores and we implemented the strategy and the dude sold all his shirts. And the purpose was he wasn't trying to make money with the shirts, but it built awareness for his audience. So we always always got to look at the goals, always got to look at, hey, what, what do people value? And then what type of partnerships can we align with that strength in the value that can bring us into a new market, but also not jeopardize what we stand for? Um, another thing I think, uh, probably a, would be a good example is uh, when when I was first working on Mountainside Fitness uh, in Fit Republic uh, Phoenix man is a while ago seven years ago um, we had probably the best grand opening ever uh, this Fit Republic was I think four stories and they had just a different theme on each floor so another one of the things I was involved with that just had a strategy purpose for everything I won't go into details because they got bought out so I think it's changed now but I would consider that a success right you build something and you sell it at top dollar um, and that that initial grand opening it wasn't just a grand opening where people to come it was a party it was um, you know everything was relevant from any type of ideal target audience they were there from people that were overweight that needed to lose weight from people that were extremely fit that wanted to be more and improve their endurance from people that uh, were extremely fit wanted to build muscle whatever I mean every single person was there from the bodybuilders to the swimsuit models and all this type of stuff and it was just one of them things where we able we were really able to build awareness um penguin air another one i did oh, i shouldn't have said that because i actually signed an nda with them but uh they did we spring training in phoenix is big right spring training every people come from all over the country even the world to see uh practice baseball like you know i never seen anything like it till i moved to phoenix and what they did when they launched their company, we were working with them on, on their marketing and strategy and stuff. And we had uh, Will Farrell, the actor, uh, he always would fly in on a helicopter, so we ended up sponsoring the helicopter, right? He flies in, everybody knows he's coming. They got the name of the brand on the chopper coming down, tons of pictures. I mean, it costs a couple, you know, thousand dollars just for the wrap and then the sponsorship itself, but boom, I mean, they blew up. Now they have a company in uh, Austin, Austin, Texas, they have a second company, um, or I guess the same company, and it's just in a different city. So, um, see if I can think of anything unique else that I did. Uh, uh, when I was working with a medical startup, um, uh, telemedicine, which is still in flux, right? People, people still haven't been able to figure it out because in the medical industry, they're dropping the ball all over the place with branding and marketing, because um, it's, it's an in-demand market. This sun's in my eyes, but um, really simple stuff. Like I, and then I'll shut up. <laughs> I uh, set up. They they were launching a website. They had everything going. People were still. Was, the idea was still new with telemedicine, with having people talk to you on your phone and, and treat you and, and diagnose you and stuff. Right? That's weird. Still nowadays, after their emergency orders, boom, we just give medicine over the phone. I guess. But um, there was tons of HIPAA laws. There was tons of problems. There was tons of uh, medical providers that just weren't cooperating or not following through with their word and it's a true startup so I mean it's millions and millions of dollars going into this and and we end up just coming up with this strategy to have different specialists or care providers or hospice or home health just different people that were relevant or professionals that were relevant to the marketplace write guest blogs on the site and then go interview them you know, we had the equipment, I had the equipment to go interview them on video, talk to them, and then we did a classic telemedicine a house call TV commercial that explained to people what it actually was. And I think the the production cost two, three thousand dollars, really simple. I had the location all set up, is outside, we didn't need lighting, and really simple. We ended up doing it in black and white antique stuff, and then some of the graphics were a little bit more expensive, but we kept the cost minimal and blew that company up 
Now they had some Medicare fraud going on, so that didn't really work out for them. And they, they fired me for calling them out on it. But um, my point is, when you really sit down and think about stuff, you could build a really awesome website. You can have an amazing ad strategy. You can have uh, some of the best, most informative blogs out there. And that's, that's great and all, but what else are you doing? Uh, where else are you searching? What opportunities are you uncovering? And uh, rocks are you turning over? Leafs or new leaves are you turning over? All these metaphors to constantly make sure that you're doing the best that you can um, to get in front of the right audience. You know, you don't want to get stuck in a lull stuck doing the same things uh, and then kind of searching for something new, right? You're writing blogs, you're like, oh man, I'm kind of running out of ideas or I'm just so, this is so bland now that I just don't even want to do it. I'm not passionate about it anymore. It's just become a task and we're not, we're not changing anything, right? We're not shaking anything up that, that, you know, I'm, I'm not enthused that I'm just going to do, do something that I already did, right? Or hire somebody this and that. And it just becomes boring, right? If, if you only want to do one blog a month and it keeps you enthused, do it. Uh, but don't fall off, you know, the side of excitement, <laughs> the the edge. Don't go off the edge of excitement into boredom uh, just because uh, you don't know what to do. You know, use me for an example as, as motivation. You know, you move to a new spot. You think you got everything under control. You lose one client. You face a winter that's cold. In the middle of where everybody's freaking out and scared, right? A pandemic. And like, what are you gonna do? Uh, what contingency plans do you have? But do you really wanna jump into a contingency plan or a new business venture when you spent so much time on, on this business, this baby that, you, that you've built? And that's one thing I've had to face a lot uh, in the last couple of months. Um, you know, pivoting's tough. Starting something new is tough and it takes a lot of work. And uh, some people are willing to do that work, but maximizing your ability to be seen, heard, valued, and appreciated while things are good is so important. Um, and that's why I always encourage people when times are slow to use that time like I have now, um, where things have really slowed down for me to really sit back and reflect, see what I can do better, but also see where my opportunities lie. So be purposeful with everything you do, guys. Hopefully this was able to shake up some ideas in your head. And always remember to pre-focus.